Hi everyone, I'm Kat and welcome to my channel, a Naturally Beautiful Girl. Today I'm sitting here to talk about facial sunscreens and Hey, so editing cat here hopping in to let you know that this video is a collaboration with Regan. We both decided to test out a bunch of facial sunscreens and we're getting ready to film the video at the same time. And I thought it'd be really cool if we just like put up our videos together because we have different skin types. We tried out some of the same sunscreens. We tried out some different ones. I thought it would just be really helpful if we kind of gave you like two reviews. If you like this video, and want to hear some more thoughts about facial sunscreens, be sure to check hers out. If you don't like this video, still check her out because she's amazing. I will make sure to link her video up above and also in the description box down below. If you guys are at all familiar with me and with my channel, I'm really into sunscreen. Part of the reason is I have super, super fair skin, which if I were to get in the sun, I would just turn into a burnt crisp instantly. But I also have autoimmune disease and it's been in remission for many, many, many years now. I'm really, really grateful for that. But part of the reason it has been in remission so long is I've avoided getting sunburns. Um, sunburns are an autoimmune response and with the particular disease I have, that can trigger the disease to come back again. So for me, sunscreen isn't an option, it is a necessity. And because of, <laughs> because of that, I have spent so much time trying out different sunscreens and I'm really picky when it comes to them. First off, if you are interested in chemical sunscreens and you want to hear about them, I suggest you leave because I only use physical sunscreens. I'm very adamant about that. And the reason I use only physical sunscreens is first off, um, I feel given the research I have read that they are much safer to use and better for your skin. Um, they physically block the sun. So you can think of it as literally like putting a shield up in front of your skin where a chemical sunscreen actually will take the light that's coming in and then have a chemical reaction occur. And that's how it protects your skin. For me, it just makes a lot more sense to just have an actual shield in place. And also they are much more reef safe and reef friendly. So if you are swimming in the ocean, that is something, or even just like, I think about it too, like when you rinse it off in the shower, like it, you know, it goes into the water system and you really need to think about like what kind of products you're putting out there. Um, and so for all those reasons, I only use physical sunscreens. And that being said, physical sunscreens can get a bad rap for white casting because I have very, very fair skin. White casting isn't as much of a problem for me as someone with a deeper skin tone. And I've really come to realize that because at first it'd be like, I don't really care if a sunscreen white casts me or not, which is true because I'm basically like a sheet of paper. I mean, look at me. But um, if you have a deeper skin tone, obviously, any sort of white casting will be exacerbated. So I am going to touch on white casting in this video, though I will say just from my own experience, I can obviously see when there is some white casting, but some of the sunscreens I may say don't white cast me it might still white cast you if you have a deeper skin tone, but because I'm so fair, it may not show up on me. Um, and I'm going to be talking about things like app applicability, just like comfort and wearing, lightness, white casting. Those are going to be the topics uh, we'll be covering in this video. And I've got a wide range of sunscreens from a variety of brands, from a variety of price points, because um, up until this point, <laughs> the Josh Rose Rook Nutrient Day Cream had been like my all time favorite staple sunscreen. I was like, this thing is so expensive. Can I find another sunscreen that I also really love that's at a little bit lower price point? And as a spoiler, I think you can. So let's go ahead and jump right into this video. I'm first gonna start off by talking about a couple of sunscreens. One that I've tried and just did not like at all. Another one that I tried and didn't work for my skin type, but I know someone as in my mother who I gave it to who really enjoys it. So the first one I'm going to talk about is this one here, which is the 100% pure tomato lycopene. This is SPF 20. It uses both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. To be honest, I've had very hit and miss experiences with 100% pure. I get asked a lot about why I don't talk about 100% pure, but the reason, the real reason is this was the first brand like I discovered in clean beauty because it's kind of like one of the staple OG brands that has really clean ingredients and I respect them so much for that. But in terms of performance, it can be a little hit or miss. And this is definitely an example of a product that is a bit of a miss for me. I was actually sent this in PR, but 
here, you know, I always give you my honest thoughts regardless of whether I'm sent something or not. And the problem I have with this sunscreen is the formula of it is awful. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. At first I thought it was just like, oh, I got a bad sunscreen, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the sunscreen itself. So I've got a little bit squeezed out here and it's completely untinted. Wow, my camera's not focusing. It's completely untinted. And the problem is, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, come on camera, let's focus. Hopefully you can see this. Oh, I think if I bend my hand that way, you can see it. There's like chunks and lumps in the sunscreen. Like the, it's clumpy and I cannot get it mixed back together. It just doesn't work well. Um, I've tried shaking it. I've tried mixing it. I've tried like mixing the clumps back together in my hand. It just didn't work. I don't know if I got a bad product um, or not, or if that's just the way they all are. So I've got the sunscreen right here. And as you can see, I can rub my hand and it will literally ball off. So if I try and put any sort of um, makeup on on top of it, like that's what happens. And I just lose the sunscreen. Like it just is bad. If you see it, just, just go past it. There are much, much better sunscreens on the market. Okay, the next one I'm going to talk about is this one here, which is the Kerrygon SPF. Um, this is, I believe, SPF 28. Yes, and it uses only non-nano zinc oxide. Non-nano just means that the particles of the zinc oxide or titanium dioxide are larger than the nanometer scale, uh, which is 10 to the minus ninth meters um, in case you carry. So it just means the particles are larger. The reason for that is there's some thoughts that the smaller particles can be more reactive, which can be true depending on the circumstances. Am I super worried about it being non-nano or not? Not particularly, but I do understand where brands are coming from when they brand something as being non-nano. So that's just what's going on there. So this sunscreen, um, I have tried it and I actually have another one because they sent me one in, another one in PR. Um, but I tried one and I actually gave it to my mom. My mom really likes this. I'm not going to pump this out because I actually um, have not opened this and I think I'm going to also get this to my mother because I know she likes it. But the problem I have with this sunscreen is it is an untinted sunscreen, which that's fine. Um, I don't remember it white casting me. I'm trying, it's been almost a year since I tried it now and I don't remember it white casting me. If you've tried it, let us know in the, in the comment section if it white cast you. But why I, this one didn't work for me is it is a little bit too heavy for my skin. I have very oily skin and this was a very like nourishing sunscreen, which if you have dry skin, like my mom is amazing and that's why she really likes it. But if you have oily skin, it's just too much for me. I recommend this if you have very dry skin, but if you have an old oily skin, I would recommend passing on this. There are many beautiful carry ground products, but this is just one that's a little bit more finicky depending on what your skin type is. The next product I'm going to talk about, I'm going to put a picture up here because I actually don't have it currently. This is the newest skincare Malu Day Cream. And this sunscreen, I think I got in a Beauty Heroes box. And I also was really impressed by it. It really didn't white cast me that much. It is once again, a more nourishing sunscreen. It's not like a lightweight, like super matte sunscreen. And ironically, I was actually using that during the summer. I think it was like two summers ago at this point. Was it? Yeah, it was two summers ago. Cause I remember wearing that sunscreen specifically on the day my husband graduated from graduate school. So that was two years ago at this point. Um, and it is a really nice sunscreen. I loved it. Um, I, I should actually look up what the SPF is. Let me, let me do that so I can actually be uh, more useful here. It is SPF 30. So I actually have not tried the new formula of it. I'm looking it up on the Hanuva skincare website and I use the previous formula. Um, I'm imagining there wasn't a huge change. It seems like the main formula change was to remove palm oil, which I am all about. Um, I'm not, I should be more cognizant of that. It's something like that. It's in the back of my head all the time that I really should be trying to be palm oil free, or at least have like sustainably sourced palm oil in products. That's a whole other can of worms of things to keep track of, but it is something I am, you know, I am thinking about and thinking about how I can like actually incorporate that into my life. But anyway, they removed palm oil from their product, which is outstanding. I really do recommend reading about palm oil and sourcing and the not sustainable practices in that. It's, it's a very good um, thing to know about. But anyway, they use zinc oxide um, and I really did enjoy this, even though it was a bit of a heavier sunscreen. However, 
it is a product I realized would actually be better for me to use during the winter. So even if you do have oily skin, this is a product that works well, regardless if you have oily or dry skin, but it's not a matte sunscreen. I think if you have dry skin, you could probably, you could use this like all year round. But I think if you have oily skin, this could be a really nice um, winter sunscreen, which I know sounds crazy. You're like winter sunscreen, but you know, you still are getting hit by sun and on your face. Uh, maybe not the rest of your body as much because you're probably bundled up, but you are still getting sun even in the winter. So I wear sunscreen all year round, um, but I think that would be a really nice product for it. So I would gladly repurchase that product again. I just, as you're going to find out, have a whole bunch of other sunscreens that I've been testing and trying out. Before I jump into like a, the big group of sunscreens I've been testing, I will also talk about this product here. Um, this is from Earthwise Beauty, and this is the Farzad's Veil Sun Reflector. This product here is very unique. This is 94% non-nano zinc oxide. And most of the sunscreen products, um, I'm trying to just grab a random one here to read on the back of it, are like 22 to like 30%, somewhere between like 20 to, uh, I've seen, it depends on if it's a mix of just straight zinc oxide or titanium dioxide, but it's typically in the like 20 to 30% um, of either or a combination of the two active ingredients. Um, so this is pretty much straight up zinc oxide. However, this does not have an SPF rating. Part of it is because of the way the product is. It's a powder and you actually mix it into other products. So here's what it looks like. Mine is still really full because like you need a tiny bit of it because this is pretty much straight zinc oxide. I've heard some rumblings online of like, oh, that's not like really SPF. Here's the thing. It's got the SPF ingredients in it. Yes, it's not rated with a specific SPF value, but it has the active ingredient in it that gives you SPF. So, and the, part of the reason it's not rated is because of the way the product is made. Like, how would you rate this is not suspended in any sort of product. And also as getting a product SPF rated is really expensive and especially for smaller brands, like that's a very time intensive and very costly pro uh, process. So I, with all the knowledge I know, here's how I use this product. I use it to boost SPF. So say I am going to be outside for a very long time. I will take some of this. I will put on a just regular facial sunscreen with a rated SPF. Then I will take some of this and mix it into my foundation and then apply it to my face to give me a little bit more SPF. And then because I'm a little bit neurotic, I sometimes will vent on my face with a, with a face powder that has SPF. The only way I would use this on my own, on its own without some other SPF product is if I were just running a few errands, really wasn't spending much time outside, I would be okay just using this but also because you don't know how much of the product you're really mixing into the other product, you can't really judge where your SPF is. Yes, it's providing some amount of sun protection, but you don't know how much. So just keep that in mind. But I do think this is a really cool product and really nice to have in your arsenal. Granted, I have found that it does tend to change the consistency of the product you're mixing it with a little bit, which makes sense because you are mixing it into another product. You're mixing a powder into some sort of liquid and it typically, which also makes sense, will make your liquid product a little bit drier, a little bit thicker, not as um, not as liquidy as it was. However, I still think this is a really nice product. I really like it. I love Earthwise Beauty. You just have to like know all that information about it going into it, but it can be a really nice supplementary SPF type product. So now let's move on to our regular facial sunscreens. I'm first going to talk about the Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream. I get so many questions about whether or not this works for oily skin, and to be honest, it's one of the best facial sunscreens for oily skin. I know everyone thinks it's going to be too heavy, which is what I thought too, but it really is just a nice lightweight sunscreen. It is completely white. It is not at all tinted. They do have a tinted version of it. I have not tried that, but that tinted version is even more expensive than the original, which I don't know. I don't know if it's really worth that price, especially with the tint, but it does rub in really nicely. It is super lightweight. It's not thick. It's not heavy. And I really don't see much of a white cast with it. I mean, I think if you have deeper skin, you could run into a problem. But for me, it just rubs in really nicely. It really feels like I have nothing on my skin, which is what I'm looking for when I'm putting on an SPF. So I really do love this. I'm going to talk about some other facial sunscreens that I really, really like. My thought is if you are if you love Josh Rosebrook or you love this product like I do, or you just want to splurge and, you know, treat yourself with this product, I think it is worth it. But if you are like, 
is there a more cost-effective sunscreen on the market? My answer is yes. So do you need to spend the money on this? No, but uh, it is a nice product and I do really like it. So that's kind of where I'm standing on that. Um, this one is SPF 30. I think I mentioned that. Um, I don't remember what it uses. Hold on. I feel like I should be more prepared for this video. This one does use zinc oxide as the main sun protection ingredient. And like I said, it's lightweight. It's not all heavy. Like I can rub my hand where I put that and I like feel, I mean, it basically doesn't feel like I have anything on, which is why this product is really nice, but it's also expensive. Okay, moving on. We're now going to be talking about the Solera sunscreen. And this is the Time Traveler Ageless Daily Face Sunscreen. And this is SPF 30 and it is zinc oxide based. Um, it's got 20% zinc oxide. So I was sent this by Solera, which I am very grateful for. I have really been enjoying using this product. This is a good dupe for the Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream. It is completely white. It is not at all tinted and I'm going to rub it in. It's a little thicker in consistency than the Josh Rosebrook. I'm having very sun protected hands today. It's still very lightweight and it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel sticky. It just absorbs into the skin really nicely, which is what I'm looking for in a sunscreen product. I think it's about half the price, honestly, of the Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream. Is another lovely product. I've been trying out a number of Solera products and to be honest, I'm really impressed by the brand. If you're looking for just an overall really nice brand, I love them. Um, I've really been enjoying their products. I also have really been enjoying, they have a non, this is a very odd product, but they have a non SPF facial serum. And I was like, uh, okay, I'll try this. And I absolutely fall in love with that product. So uh, definitely a brand worth checking out. And this is a really nice sunscreen. I would like to try out their body sunscreens as well, but this one is, is great. So I've also talked about this one in my recent video where I tried out some products from Mad Hippie. I will link that up above, but this is the Mad Hippie SPF, uh, facial SPF. This is SPF 30 and it is zinc oxide based as well. So <laughs> I'm running out of space for this. I'm going to put some of this right here. And once again, this sunscreen reminds me a lot in consistency to the Josh Rosebrook sunscreen. It is extremely lightweight. Um, it is actually more lightweight than the Solera sunscreen. And I really don't see much of a white cast with it. I just kind of rubbed it on this part of my arm here. Um, it just rubs in nicely. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel a little sticky. So I would say if you really want to dupe the Josh Rosebrook and you want like a very affordable dupe, um, I would check out this one. I've been quite impressed by it. The one con I will say with the sunscreen, and I talked about this in the Solera video, is it definitely has a strong scent. So if you're looking for something a little bit more on the scent neutral side, the Solera and Josh Rosebrook are better. This one does have a strong scent. I'm not really sure what it is exactly. Uh, it has carrot seed oil and ras red raspberry seed oil, and I think between the two. Yeah, I would say that's probably what it what's giving it its scent. So it's not it's not fragrance, but I think just from the oils in it, it's giving it a scent. But if you really do not like scented products, um, in that case, I would recommend passing. But if you just want a really nice, affordable sunscreen that works really well, especially if you have oily skin because it is very lightweight, I would recommend this one. Yeah, I'll do this one and then I'll do two that are very lightly tinted. So this one, I had very high hopes for it. This is the brand new 11 by Venus. This is their sunscreen in collaboration with Credo. Um, I believe it's only being sold at Credo. I don't know if that's permanent or if it will be sold other places eventually, but as of right now, it is only sold at Credo. And this is the Unrivaled Sun Serum. And I was all mixed up in my head when I bought this product because I saw this little thing online. I thought it was going to be like a stick sunscreen. But it is not. I've never encountered the sun, a sunscreen quite like this. This gets the most innovative sunscreen award out of this whole bunch. Um, it's completely unique, unusual, never seen anything like it. So it's got the coolest packaging. Like it is super, super weighty, heavy packaging. And look at this. So when I go to unscrew it, there's like this button up at the top. Focus on the sunscreen and not my face, please. Wow, this is, okay, there we go. So when I go to unscrew this, there's this button up at the top and it's going to pop up. And what you can do then is use that to suck some of the sunscreen up in the dropper. And you're like, dropper? And I'm like, yes, the sunscreen is extremely liquidy. Think Ilya True Skin Serum Foundation consistency. Like it is just gonna run everywhere on you. So 
um, keep that in mind when you go to use it. And this is actually the sunscreen I used on my face today. And I want to be able to tell you that I love it, but I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm going to put some on my wrist right here. So here it is. Uh, it is, why did I do my wrist? Okay, there you go. It is, you can see it running there. I'm going to rub it in. And the one thing about the sunscreen is it is completely invisible. Like you see nothing. I really think a lot of that is from it being a brand by Venus Williams because obviously she has much, a much deeper skin tone. And I, I don't know, but I imagine she has struggled with finding sunscreens that don't white cast her. So I, I can envision the reasoning behind this line is to come out with a sunscreen that is completely white cast proof. I'm not a hundred percent sure how I feel about this product. I kind of love it. And I kind of don't love it at the same time because it is very liquidy and a little oily. Sometimes it can feel a little oily on my skin. I had this problem and I worry about this with this product is it took me quite a while to actually feel like I got the sunscreen or what I imagined to be the sunscreen, like a mixed up into the liquid. Cause I had to like fully pull the liquid up into the dropper, push it out. I shake it all a bunch, like shake it a lot and then pump it up and then push it out and then shake it a lot. Like that's kind of how you have to do to actually get the, the sunscreen um, mixed up into the product because it tends to separate. Like when I got it at first, it was like completely separated. Granted, unlike the 100% um, pure, like because of the way the packaging is made, you can actually get it all mixed up, but you have to be really cognizant to do that. But if you don't like the feeling of traditional sunscreens at all, and you want something that's just like lightweight and just completely innovative, this is an outstanding product has a really high SPF. It is 35. And when it says like sheer, it means sheer. Like, like my arm looks like it has nothing on it. It feels like it has nothing on it. So overall, it's a good product. It's just been the one that's taken me the longest to understand how to use and how to work with it because it is so completely different from other sunscreens. But if you're looking for something that's just going to completely change the way you think about sunscreens, I would recommend checking this one out. And I think also if you have a deeper skin tone, I think this could be a really amazing product because I don't think it really white casts at all. Okay, the last two products, these are both lightly tinted sunscreens. The first one is this one from Blasoma. This is the Photonic SPF 25 sunscreen. I'm going to put a little bit of this on my hand. I'm gonna use the other hand this time. So here's what the Blossoma sunscreen looks like. It is deeper than my skin tone, but when I rub it out, I don't really see it. Cause I was worried with this sunscreen that it would show up deeper than my skin tone and be look kind of funny, but I find that it just kind of rubs in. And I think that that tint really just helps to prevent white casting. So, but I also don't know if you have a deeper skin tone, if that tint is going to be a problem a problem since it's only like one shade of that tint. I don't know. Um, I do really like the sunscreen. It is super lightweight. Think Josh Rosebrook, think the Mad Hippie, also think the 11 by Venus, like super lightweight, really doesn't feel like you have anything on. I think I've only tried out two Blasoma skincare products, but honestly, so far I've been really, really impressed with the brand and impressed with the products I've tried. So it's really nice. It's a little bit pricier than some of the other sunscreens that I also really like. So I'm not entirely sure it's worth that price, but it is a really good product if you're looking into it and interested. Um, cause yeah, it feels really lightweight. It really doesn't feel like I have anything on. Okay. The final product is one I kind of bought on a whim and then like actually really been liking it. And this is the kinship sunscreen. This is a new kind of new brand being carried at Credo. I think it's also carried at Sephora now too. Um, I feel like it's targeted for a younger age group. I feel so old saying that. I'm only 27. I'm turning 28 next month. I feel like it is targeted for a younger age group. However, like who's to say, like we can all use whatever product we want. You can be 18 and use anti-aging products. You can be 60 and use um, products for, you know, to help treat acne or oily prone skin. Like you can just use whatever works for you. Um, so I bought this because this is a more affordable sunscreen and I wanted to try it out. I was like, I want to have a good mix of prices of sunscreens because sunscreens can get real expensive, but this is definitely one of the more affordable ones. And this is also a tinted sunscreen. It's got a slight tint to it, just like the Blasoma, 
But this one is so much more affordable than the Blasoma. Um, where did I put the... I don't remember where I put the Blasoma. I think down here is safe. So you can see it's got a very, very light tint to it. Um, it's not white, but it's a much lighter tint than the Blasoma sunscreen. Um, and it just rubs in beautifully. It's not as weightless as the Mad Hippie. Sorry, I'm having to look at all of them here so I remember. It's not as weightless as the Mad Hippie or the Blasoma um, or the Eleven, but it's or the Josh Rosebrook, but it is similar in how it feels to, for instance, the Solera, where it's just a little bit nourishing, but so not completely like nothing there. But it's something that even with my oily skin, I gravitate towards this product a lot. In fact, my husband and I went for a three-hour hike yesterday, and I sat here before going on the hike. And I laid out all my sunscreens because, uh, you know, I was going to put on sunscreen before the hike. And I looked at all of them. I thought about all of them. And the one I actually reached for to wear was this one because all I wanted to wear was just sunscreen, no makeup, because it was hot and I was on a hike. And I just wanted this one because it has a really high SPF value. It's 32. The only one that's higher is the 11 by Venus, which is 35. I wanted a lot of SPF. And I wanted this one over the Venus, A, because... <laughs> I don't know, in my brain, I trust that I am getting the proper amount of SPF the way that it is suspended in this product a little bit more than the 11. I didn't want to just rely solely on that. It's a me problem. It just, I, I get, I don't know if anyone else is like this, but I get like real nervous, especially when I'm going to be outside in the sun for that long. I want to make sure my SPF is like perfect. So and I also like that this one had a little bit of a tint. Does it at all even out my skin tone? Absolutely not, but it does. Um, just make sure that I'm not white casted. And, you know, that was what I wanted. I just wanted it to look like I wasn't wearing anything but have sunscreen on. And that was what this product did. Out of all the sunscreens, the ones I would probably recommend the most are the Kinship Self Sun Reflect Sunscreen, the Mad Hippie Sunscreen, and the Eleven by Venus. Um, just because I think they're really great um, and the price point is really good. Uh, the, well, the 11 by Venus is a little bit more expensive, but it is just so innovative. Like we'll, we'll give it a little bit of wiggle room for price. The Solera, the Blasoma are also really good, but they have drawbacks, um, especially with regards to price. The Josh Rosebrook is excellent, but the price is really high. The 100% Pure, as we know, I would skip. The Ferris Odds Veil is also a um, really nice like supplementary sunscreen product. So I know this was a lot of information, but I hope it helped you. There are a lot of options out there if you're looking for a good facial sunscreen this summer. I also want to give a special shout out to Unsun, um, which is a black owned uh, sunscreen brand. I have not tried their sunscreen. I was a little bit nervous, honestly, because it is a tinted sunscreen and my skin is so fair that it would be a too deep of a sunscreen for me. However, if you are looking for an amazing black owned brand, that is one I will link their sunscreens down below as well. They're also sold at Credo, which is really cool. Um, it makes it convenient. If you're placing a Credo order, you can check them out. Um, but I haven't tried them out myself, but I have heard good things about it. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section down below what are some of your facial, favorite facial sunscreens. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell button so you don't miss any of my videos. And Check me out on Instagram. I'm at Naturally Beautiful Cat there. Um, you can see more of me. Sometimes I show some of my garden. I have some jalapenos that I am are ready and I'm super excited to be able to use them. So my garden is coming along finally. And um, yeah, just uh, I'm glad to have you and thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you again next time. Bye.